Good morning, fans of Privateer FX. Coming at you on the Thursday, I believe it's the 28th of May. End of the month here, so we got month end flows at the end of the day. Be careful of that. But let's look at these uh, stock charts for a second. I mean, for the love of fucking Louisiana, my lord. Tough day uh, in the NASDAQ. Really, really, really. Ridiculous. I don't even have the NASDAQ chart up here. Let's take a look at this. NQ. My heavens to Betsy. This is the daily. Does not do it justice. Let's look at the hourlies. Bang. 95.09. Back to 94.78, and here we are, 93.83. Um, this kind of wild hysteria uh, usually means change in trend, right? So everyone's getting fucked. Bulls and bears get fucked. Uh, this is usually a signal, or it's a signal as far as we're concerned, um, about change in trend. So uh, we are looking to be short equities. Uh, but you got to keep it light on the early stages. One of the reasons that a lot of the professionals um, will wait, you know, one of my mentors used to tell me, he used to say, don't play in the first 20% or the last 80%. We, we play in the meat of the move and when it becomes trendy. So I'm not saying wait for this thing to go down 20%. I'm just saying that certainly you're going to have a lot more clarity on shorts now below 91.79 or whatever that low was, 91.72. And if you want to be short up here, uh, you got to keep it small, keep it light. Uh, you know, we will probably take out 96.09 one more time, believe it or not, even though that's 220 points away. As you can see, uh, when we're changing trend, especially on like a sort of a whack job, high vol instrument, uh, I'm thinking like cable, I'm thinking uh, dollar rand, anything can happen. Uh, but we're looking for a good safe place to be short and to get short basically because of the last two days. Um, that's higher volatility, which usually means left-hand side. Anyway, enough said about the NASDAQ. Uh, if I didn't already have a shitload of gray hair, that stuff will add to the gray hairs. Euro, pain in the ass yesterday. We did get paid in Euro, mainly because we traded it kind of like pussies, right? We, we got long at 90. We sold up at 20. And then when the washout, first washout down to 77, we bought a little, um, and then we sold them back at 08 because of the options at 109.90. We did pick some up down at 70, but we kind of chickened out, um, and we're just long smalls. Uh, looks like Euro's turning. Uh, and why do we say that with any conviction? Boons. Uh, and more importantly, uh, BTPs, which I don't even know if I have them out here. Yes, I do. BTPs. So as long as BTPs are above um, 141.50, we will have confidence that this deal is going to get passed. And then we go back to one of our original premises, which is the U.S. is doing QE infinity trillions and trillions and trillions and trillions and trillions and trillions. EU's doing 750 billion, which is like, you know, pretty meaningless in the scope of what I think is going to be 20 trillion when the US is all finished. So just the supply of the currency, simple supply, money supply is going to drive euro dollar higher. Interest rates are no longer a driver in currency. Uh, so we think um, the actual supply of fiat, or in this case electronic money supply, um, is going to be a driver. So the 200-day 
uh, in Euro is now just looking 110 110.08 so we're right here uh, 08 a close above that will really uh, loosen things up keep in mind we have month end flows today a lot of the banks are saying contradictory things one of the more trustworthy banks out there RBC uh, as far as research is concerned uh, thinks it's going to be uh, dollar sales but um, don't hang your hat on that just be uh, be aware of what's going on today as far as month end flows dollar swiss the trend book is short but it's really not doing dick right i mean it's just not doing dick um euro swiss on the other hand spooked some people yesterday up to 107 I don't know why we didn't sell that um, just because of the 800 pound gorilla in the room in this thing it, it really can't go up um, the safer sell is probably between 107.10 and 108.10 but you want to be core short euro swiss um, just because there's a market player sitting long 800 billion of it um, and that has to resolve itself uh, one way or the other. Aussie Yen. We fucking nailed that, right? Looked pretty hectic. Euro was shooting up through the stars. Um, and it looked kind of all sort of risk on -y and yada yada. 71.92 the high. Um, pinged it core short Aussie yen uh, next time up it's less good so you just want to be core short Aussie yen this also dovetails with our like pussy sized position short equities right now um, Aussie yen core short story actually works as well if you believe this China malarkey dollar cad up at the fix we went up to uh, 20 we talked about selling between uh, 11 and 41 hopefully you sold some up there um, we just tactically traded it or square again but this is going to have heavy heavy resistance um, between 10 and 50 now for for the next few days maybe into the next week so um, of course short dollar cad looks all right one of the problems with dollar cad uh, is crude which just got its ass beat what do they say red-headed stepchild um, this thing is turned these charts it's funny you look at this crude chart it, it, it's now meaningless they should just take this bar out because you don't get a real feeling for the fact that crude is down 3.6 percent because of these $60 bars that happen once every hundred years um, but uh, trust the math here 3.6% and 3077 will be some more stops so crude also looks pretty wobbly uh, another reason to be suspect on your on your risk on Euro Norway um, He's the horse that just keeps on riding, right? We printed down at 80. I'd be careful now because of this crude move and just because we've come so far so elegantly with such low vol. Uh, if equities do turn and crude goes lower, uh, this will probably pop back through 11, which will just give us an opportunity to resell it. I think we're going to patiently wait for maybe some sort of stretch up to 11.20. Um, and then we'll refine this horse and jump back on. Um, but she's been a good, good girl, Euro Norway. Wow. But it looks like um, if you are still short and you've been more patient than I, um, I'd be careful now. This looks like she wants to turn. Uh, so we, we shall see. Gold. Where's gold? I mean... What are you going to do, right? 
1684 uh, looked like sort of the end of the world. Now we're up here, um, right back up here, 1728. You want to be long gold, very hard to trade. Man, you are a sexy motherfucker if you bought that down at uh, 1685. We're waiting. Uh, we're going to do it sort of what you call the uh, momentum style. We're going to wait for new highs to get long gold. Uh, that will probably mean the world is falling to bits, but um, not too worried about it. Dollar max and dollars are, are they going to turn? No signs yet. Dollars are did do a little uh, capricious bar last night, traded down to 30, back to 36. Is this the turn? Don't know. Uh, the professional play is just wait for 1753. So we uh, just ignore my, my beeping there. We're just trading around some stuff. Um, we. Um, We'll push the chips more towards the center when we get prices above this uh, 1753. Listen, I've said a lot here. Um, we're going to try and be core short stocks today. Uh, core short Aussie yen. We'll be looking at these turns in dollar EM. Um, and we're going to try and keep a nimble long euro position as long as BTPs and boons tell us it's okay. Good luck out there, people. Talk to you tomorrow. Ciao.